final stage of life. Soars of hope to welcome, protect and accompany the final stage of this life. God said to Moses, remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are treading is holy ground, in response to the phenomenon of the bush that burned without being consumed at the foot of Mount Horeb. If entering into the life of a person is always walking on holy ground, all the more so when this life is affected by illness or the supreme threshold of death. The Lord has come so that we may have life in abundance CFGN 1010 and in him we have been called to be sores of hope, missionaries of the gospel of life, and promoters of the culture of life and the civilization of love. Those who suffer and are facing the end of this life need to be accompanied, protected, and helped to respond to the fundamental questions of existence, to approach their situation with hope, to receive care with technical competence and human quality, to be accompanied by their loved ones and to receive spiritual consolation and the help of God, the source of love and mercy. Pain and death are part of human life from the moment we are born until we die. This is attested to by the personal experience of each of us and by universal literature, in which this experience is not only a source of inspiration, but also an object of constant reflection. Throughout life, physical pain and moral suffering are present in a habitual way in all human biographies. No one is a stranger to pain and suffering. Death is the foreseen culmination of earthly life, although we are uncertain as to when and how it will occur. It is part of our biography, as we are affected by the biography of those around us and because the attitude we adopt towards the fact that we are going to die determines in part how we live. Pain and death are dimensions or phases of human existence. As Pope Francis says, I want to remember what the big question is, many times in life, we waste time asking selves, but who am I? And you can ask yourself who you are and spend a lifetime searching for who you are, but ask yourself, who am I for? You are for God, no doubt. But he wanted you to be also for others, and he has placed in you many qualities, inclinations, gifts and charisms that are not for you but for others. Testament of the Wounded Bird from Jose Luis Martin Descalzo I tiny being of feathers and weeping, at 60 years of age, and in full use of my mental faculties, as they say, before the invisible God who listens to me, before the spring that will come in six months and I do not know if I shall see it, before the light that sings and affirms at my window, before all the pains that, including my own, inflame the planet, I want to confess my certainty, that I have been loved, that am, that all the emptiness I have, ends up building every day a tiny and sufficient joy. I want to confess that I have been and am happy, although in the balance of my life, there are more disenchantments and failures, because even if they were to multiply, they still wouldn't erase the trace of your kisses. And in this last stretch of my life, I testamentarily dispose of the very few things I have had. First of all, I give my soul back to the one who gave it to me. I give my body to the earth, which is its owner. I give it with pain and tearing myself apart, because I have loved it so much, and because it has served me like a faithful puppy. I give my hands, these that now write, these that so many times were like a glove of my soul, these that needed millions of words, that were then rolling to other hearts, and made me live at the same time in many souls. I give my eyes too. I return my poor heart with all its wounds. Ah, if only I could lend it to another breast, so that, wounded and all, it could go on walking, even with its pair of crutches. Ah, heart sweet dear dear monotonous heart of mine, and in this testament, I still have to leave my only wealth my hope. I have meters and meters to make millions of flags with it, now that so many are looking for it without finding it, when it is right in front of our eyes, because you falcon, came down from the heavens just to sow it. If I die which remains to be seen, wrap me in its green flag, 
and rest assured that my heart is still beating, though it stands as still as a stone. Be sure that, though my blood is now cold, I will continue to love, because I know nothing else, for that reason alone, because I know nothing else. Here are some questions that may help you to reflect and then to share in community. Remember to take notes and write down what you want to communicate. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place you stand on is holy ground. What people have you accompanied in the final moments of their lives? How have you felt? What have been the difficulties? The attitude we adopt when facing the fact that we are going to die determines in part how we live. What would you like to be remembered for after your death? What would you ask of those who live with you so that they can help you in the final process of your life, when it comes? Last Will and Testament Why don't you write them down? What would you say to physicians when faced with treatments or diagnostic tests that are considered useless or futile? Who makes the decision if you can no longer do it? The way to share in community will be through listening circle. How well I know the font that flows and runs. Though it is night, this eternal spring is hidden in this living bread to give us life. Though it is night, this living fountain that I desire. In this bread of life I see it, though it is night. Saint John of the Cross.